In this presentation, we're going to be looking at detachable stock warrants. These are warrants that are issued with a debt security, namely bonds in this case, but they can be sold separately or they're uh, separated from the bonds. And what this warrant does is it gives the uh, warrant holder the right to pur purchase a certain number of shares of the company's stock as a designated price. Now, when we issue these uh, uh, bonds with these detachable warrants, we have to divide up the uh, bond between its liability portion here and the equity portion that it represents here. And that equity portion would be uh, those uh, detachable stock warrants. And we do that using two different methods. We either use the uh, proportional method or the incremental method. And we make this uh, separation here between debt and equity so when we when these uh, warrants here are exercised we can allocate their uh, price here or the um, what we receive for them as part of the equity portion of our exchange all right here we're going to look at detachable stock warrants and we're going to use the residual or incremental method and this is where we know either the debt portion of this bond that we issued or the equity portion. That would be the uh, warrants that we issued with the bonds. But we do not know both of them. So uh, we have to determine one based on the value of the other. So let's go look at our example here. And we'll look at the example where we know what the debt portion or what the bond would be valued at. And in this case, it was $9,700 for each bond. And the warrant market value of that is unknown. So that's what we have to determine. So the way we do that here is we take our known amount, in this case it would be the bonds payable, and we had that at a $97,000 value here. The bonds would be issued at a discount for $97,000. And then we know what we received for these bonds, in this case it was $101,000. So we got the credit amount here and the debit amount here. So what we do is the balancing amount would go to a, the with the warrants here, the additional paid in capital for the warrants, and that would be the equity portion. So the difference here between the $101,000 that we received less the $97,000, that would be its discounted amount here, the carrying value when we issued it. The difference here would be allocated to these warrants here, and that would be $4,000 here. So uh, we would increase our additional paid in capital to warrants here by four thousand dollars so we were able to uh, determine we knew what this known amount here for our bonds payable was so we could determine that uh, by uh, subtracting here the cash amount that we received uh, less this bonds payable the balance here we go to additional paid in capital of the warrants all right, let's look at how we'd record these warrants once they're exercised. And our example here would be where we 80% of these warrants were exercised. So let's go down and look at our example here. For one warrant, you would be able to receive 10 shares of $10 par common stock, and you'd have to pay $37 per share. Now the total of shares that would be available would be these 100 bonds times the 10 shares per bond or 1,000 shares. And then our total warrants here, of course, we had one warrant per bond uh, times 100 bonds, and that would be 100 warrants. So let's go up here and look at our cash account here, where 80% of these warrants were exercised. So you've got uh, 80 warrants here times 10 shares per warrant times a share price here of $37. So our total uh, cash here would be a debit of $29,600. So now let's go down here and look at our additional paid in capital to these warrants here. And upon issuing these war or exercising these warrants, it would be reduced here by this amount here. So we 80% of these warrants were exercised times the uh, amount of balance that was in this additional paid in capital for th of warrants here was $4,000. So the uh, we re reduce it by $3,200 here. Now let's go up here to our common stock. Now that would be um, the par value here, uh, the number of shares times the par value, or 800 times a $10 par per stock, and that would be for $8,000 here. 
Now the balance would be to the additional paid in capital here. This is uh, the balance between the debits and the credits. So if we look here at our common stock of $8,000 plus this credit balance here to additional paid in capital or common stock of $24,800, that would balance here with our debit amount here of $3,200 in the additional paid in capital to the warrant and the debit amount here of $29,600 uh, that the cash we received. So this additional paid in capital was no more than a balancing entry. Okay, along with those uh, stock warrants, we also have to take care of this bonds payable or the debt portion of that uh, bond when it was issued. Now, I just using the internal rate of return I've taken the cash flows from that bond here and plugged them into my internal rate of return function and determined that the internal rate of return in that band was uh, in this case it was 5.093 percent per period two periods for 10.186 annual percentage here and then I just put it into my amortization schedule here. So I amortize this bond down using the effective rate of interest method. And this I did because we have to uh, record the cash payments on that bond. And also we have to recognize the interest expense on that bond. And we have to amortize it down such that when it becomes mature, we have a balancing amount here on our balance sheet. So just remember, you have to take care of the uh, bonds payable uh, by amortizing it. And in this case, I would have used the uh, effective interest rate of method for amortizing this bond.